today's Wellness Wednesday is going to look at sleep hygiene. So take a moment before we start and think about your sleep last night, how you're feeling today, um, and how those might be connected. Did you get enough sleep? Did you get too little sleep? Did you get deep enough sleep, good quality sleep? Um, lots and lots of people have disrupted sleep for many, many different reasons, and a lot of people don't know that they have disrupted sleep. They may think that their way that they sleep is just natural or normal, or that's just how they are, um, or they may not realize that some of the things that are going wrong in their day-to-day -day lives are actually because of sleep disruption. Now sleep, um, getting too much sleep and getting too little sleep often look very much the same. Um, the, the problems that come up when you have too much or too little sleep look a lot like dementia. They, they, it impacts your memory, it impacts your, your reasoning skills, it impacts executive functioning, it impacts verbal abilities. Um, it disrupts basically your whole body's functioning system, the way your brain functions, the way your nervous system functions. So when you have disrupted sleep, a whole lot of things are gonna go wrong. Also, people don't realize that disrupted sleep impacts your emotional regulation system as well. So that means that your ability to tolerate small irritants, frustrations, challenges in your day-to-day -day life, that's gonna be disrupted if your sleep is disrupted. So the better sleep you have and the more you attend to your sleep quality, the more likely you're going to be able to handle life's little, little bumps and ups and downs and things. So when we talk to people about sleep disruption, we wanna talk about a thing called sleep hygiene, which basically means how you're attending to sleep and what, what things you're doing to make sure that your sleep is um, doing what it's supposed to do in terms of restoring the body's natural functioning and consolidating and processing memories. Um, so one of the things that we teach people to do for sleep hygiene is bed training, meaning that your brain learns to associate certain activities with certain places or certain cues in the environment. So you wanna train your brain to understand that bed is for sleep. So that means that you should restrict your bed activities to sleeping and sex and that's it. No doing paying the bills, no hanging out with your friends, no sitting on your computer doing work. When you train your brain that the bed means that it's a place of stimulation and activity, then it's gonna learn that sleeping maybe isn't necessarily the primary goal of it. Another piece of sleep hygiene is going to be monitoring what kinds of stimulation you've got going on. So um, you may not know this, but your phone screen, your computer screen, your television screen, the light that comes from that actually inhibits melatonin in your brain, which is the natural, um, the chemical that helps you sleep. So you have to stop looking at screens uh, up to around an hour before you're trying to fall asleep. Otherwise your melatonin hasn't had a chance to kind of come back online from that, from being inhibited by the screens. Um, people a lot of times will use substances to help them sleep, either alcohol, cannabis, um, pills, other kinds of things to help them sleep, which may make you lose consciousness faster, but it actually disrupts the depth and quality of the sleep that you're getting, and so those aren't actually helping you. It's also important to make sure that your bedroom is appropriately dark. Uh, light goes through your eyelids, and so even when you're asleep, if there's light going on in the room, either like like lights in the environment or TV or something else like that, then it is triggering your brain to think that it's daytime and to inhibit that melatonin and to, to be more active, to keep your brain more active. And then falling to sleep with television on or with movies on or something like that, which I think a lot of people do, um, again, that does keep that sort of light stimulation going on, um, but it's also keeping your brain engaged in whatever's happening. So your brain is still processing whatever's happening on the television. If you're watching Law and Order or you're watching you know, crime scenes and things like that, your brain is absorbing that information and is going to be um, kind, of, kind of knitting around that while you sleep. So one of the purposes of your dreams is to process emotions and process things that have happened to you. But if your dreams are focused on whatever you've just watched on the television, it's not actually doing the work of processing your emotions and your experiences. So those are gonna show up in your day-to-day -day life when you're gonna find yourself more irritable, you're gonna find yourself confused and cranky at people, um, research shows that people with disrupted sleep tend to blame other people for their problems more often um, and it's, it, it's just because of sort of that lowered tolerance um, and, and more irritability. Also it's been shown that people that have disrupted sleep too much or too little pain tolerance goes way way down. So even after one night of disrupted sleep your ability to tolerate pain goes down very very significantly. So if you have ongoing sleep disruption you're probably also going to have ongoing chronic pain which may be contributing to your sleep disruption which would then contribute to your pain so it becomes very much a cycle. So starting to put these things into place to shift your sleep hygiene back into a good place is going to impact your whole life is going to make 
everything feel better, your relationships, your sense of self, your memory, um, your quickness, your agility, mental agility, all of that. Sleep underpins everything about your daily life. So getting your sleep on track is so, so important.